I'm here with Stefan of Neera to talk about the latest record, All Is Dust, out June 28th on Metal Blade Records. I don't know if you know this, but I'm Canadian, so that Rush shirt, uh, it's spot on. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it was on purpose or not, but uh, job well done. Actually, it was on purpose because I, th I thought when I have the chance to talk to someone uh, uh, from Canada, I should wear uh, an appropriate T-shirt. <laughs> That's almost like half a passport. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost half a passport. So uh, let's talk about this record, All Is Dust. Um, when, when you look back at the making of this album, uh, th does this album uh, feel or, or do you remember it as an album that took a different way to get from the starting line all the way to the finish line when you compare it to some of the previous albums? Well, I mean, yeah, I'd say so because... Um... Usually, the, uh, our songwriting mode is pretty much that uh, our um, drummer, uh, Sebastian, or other guitarist, Tobias, and me, we write the songs like in a, as a three-piece, you know, in the rehearsal room. We did this like all the time uh, for the seventh record, for our comeback record. We did it a little differently. There was a record that was mainly uh, written by Tobias by himself, and the others, you know, added uh, their part rather more or less like in the end. But um, this record was again uh, done like uh, in the old school style, you know, three people in the rehearsal room uh, writing the record. We started writing the record, uh, had like three songs and then skipped the material uh, because we thought it was a little too much uh, of a comfort zone, you know, and we wanted to step out of uh, our comfort zone a little more and, you know, dare something and um, yeah and show a little more you know a little more courage or leave like the boundaries a little more behind uh, that uh, yeah that uh, we set ourselves in the past or something so uh, we started new uh, and then we had like an idea or in direction and then we pretty much followed this direction uh, all the all the way through until the record was finished thinking about outside the box and trying to put together a record that breaks a little bit of the mold of the previous albums. Does that make you wonder about where the band is today sound-wise? Have you guys discovered what your sound is, or do you even care? Are you more interested on making albums that, that represent the moment of the band, not necessarily the legacy of the band? Well, it's a good question. I mean, I think when we started, I mean, it's already like uh, 20, uh, 20 years, like it's the uh, 20th uh, anniversary of the band, you know. So uh, when we started, we wanted to be a metalcore band, you know. Um, there was nothing um, like bad about this genre, or nothing that, nothing shameful or whatever about this genre, you know. And it was a cool new thing that came out. It combined this, the strength of, uh, you know, two very different types of music that didn't have anything to do with each other before. And we were like very proud of it, you know. And then we changed our sound a little bit and uh, then uh, started you know, leaning more towards death metal sound and we always had some black metal influence and stuff. And then there was a phase where we rather would call our sound like a, a death metal band or a modern death metal band or something or a modern metal band. Uh, and then a few years later, we decided, you know, actually, um, you know, metalcore is uh, still fine. You know, I mean, it's, uh, it's what we started with as a band and um, it's, uh, it's still cool, you know, and it's still um, all right. Uh, you know, to uh, stick to your roots, you know, and be uh, proud of uh, where you come from, you know, and uh, why not stick to it, you know, but uh, as a band, um, yeah, we pretty much try to care as less as possible, you know, because, um, I don't know, if you look like um, cool bands, like maybe Gojira or something, it's also very uh, difficult to define what kind of metal that is, you know, it's some kind of modern metal, you know, um, and I think that's the greatest thing that you can you can do, you know, just like leave all boundaries behind and uh, free yourself from any kind of genres and uh, categories and stuff, you know, and um, yeah, and create what, uh, what you like, you know, and sometimes we have to uh, try again, you know, uh, to free ourselves from that, you know, and uh, maybe try out something new. Um, but uh, at the same time, you know, we're completely fine with uh, with our roots and with the beginning uh, of the band. And, uh, you know, we're not ashamed of, uh, you know, uh, quoting uh, ourselves musically, you know. And you shouldn't be. And you shouldn't be. Uh, and, and when I was listening to this record, the first thing that I felt about the sound on this album, it was that a very it was a very dark 
sounding record. And I don't mean dark necessarily. Uh, you know, at times it has a lot of black metal influences in it, but it, it's it's a very dark feeling record. And when you look at the title of the album, All Is Dust, there's some darkness to that. Like, I mean, there's yeah. once you go to dust, there's really no coming back unless you're like the rising of the phoenix. But so, and when you look at the lyrical content, when you look at some of the titles of the songs, there is this sense of, of of ending of of darkness of impending doom are 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 you guys uh the glass is always half empty kind of guys and that's that's where this record is born out of uh i would i would say actually um actually not i i'd say we're rather um i don't say i think we're rather uh, optimistic guys you know uh, i mean if you uh, if you look at our lyrics like all the records through you know um, there's a lot of criticism. There's a lot of we, we dealt with a lot of you know very shitty things, uh, abysmal things, you know, um, genocides and all kinds of uh, I don't know all, all kinds of uh, terrible things where you would you know uh, wish that wouldn't be there or something. But uh, we always do it like with this kind of uh, like impetus, you know, um, this uh, kind of um, uh, force, you know, um, to to change something, you know, and I think as long as the willing to change something is uh, is there, um, that means that there is still, you know, hope or optimism, you know, and the way that our lyrics were written, like, all the way through, were always, like, meant as uh, as an, uh, as an, as a door, you know, to, uh, to, uh, to make things better, you know, and, um, and so, um, so I think that the title itself, you know, and also the layout, uh, is very gloomy and very very dark, you know. Um, but at the same time, we have like uh, encouraging um, positive songs on the record, you know, uh, "Render Fear Powerless" or "Edifier" or "Pacifier," uh, that um, you know that that show this side of the band, the side that uh, tries to encourage the listener, you know, believe in yourself. Um, you know, don't let yourself um, govern by fear or something. Don't let others limit yourself, you know, and um, yeah, be proud and uh, and live your life and, um, and try to achieve your your goals, you know. And uh, so, despite this very gloomy title of the new record, uh, there's still a lot of uh, room for optimism uh, and hope, even uh, in the lyrics. And you mentioned those three first songs you guys were putting together that you know it didn't hit the spot for you, so you guys kind of restarted. What was about those three songs that didn't feel like they were going to be right for a new record? Well, I mean, pretty much they sounded like uh, they would have fit perfectly on the last record, you know. And so as a band, you sometimes think like, what can, what degree of development uh, is fine with us, you know. And uh, there are certain bands that say like, uh, I don't really care a lot about development. It's uh, about, it's, our music is about something else. And there are other bands that I think like we need to sound very different than on the record before because you know our fans like that and we want to prove to ourselves that we are you know that versatile or something and um, every band I think uh, has a certain degree of uh, self-development that the, that the band feels uh, comfortable with you know and ours is I'd say not that big you know uh, but it's still there and uh, we had the feeling this sounds exactly like the material uh, that we wrote like four years ago or three years ago, you know. And uh, so we thought like it shouldn't it shouldn't be like this. We should we should add some some other you know component or some other direction or anything like uh, to the sound that uh, yeah that that we would feel more comfortable with in terms of uh, all right uh, this is a certain kind of development or. Uh, you know, we tried something out and this is more exciting and, you know, um, for us even as a, as a band, you know. And uh, yeah, so this this was the reason why we, we decided to, to skip the material and start all over again. And, and when you when you look at your own personal development as a guitar player, is there a record that you can go back and say that that album was the one where I had the biggest growth, where there's the biggest change in who I was before as a guitar player and who I am now as a guitar player? That's a good question. I mean, um, as a, as guitarists, you know, we 
Tobias and, and myself, we're very equal when it comes to that. We don't take ourselves that seriously as uh, as guitarists. You know, uh, we're not these kind of technical guitarists that are very familiar with you know uh, um, with amps and uh, and all this kind of uh, technical stuff that is there. You know, uh, we're not really that nerdy. Also, you know, uh, we're rather we're rather like uh, songwriting guys. You know, like for us, the focus is on the songwriting and. I always thought like the guitar is uh, something like um, yeah an extension uh, of uh, of my soul rather you know and uh, whatever I think and feel um, goes through my body into my fingers uh, and, and into my hands and then uh, it's uh, it it's, it manifests on a guitar in a riff or in a melody or something you know and uh, so the technical aspect has never been very uh, important to us you know we're. We're rather, uh, I'd say, maybe we should call it like emotional guitarists or something. Like, even if you would ask me, have you developed a lot in the last 20 years as a guitarist? I would say, I don't think so, you know. Um, it doesn't It doesn't feel like this, you know. Uh, maybe maybe it's the case, but for me personally, um, I don't, uh, I don't feel, uh, I don't feel a, a technical development, you know. I rather say like, uh, it's all just like different, different versions of uh, different themes, you know, um, and of different emotions and thoughts and, um, you know, zeitgeist and everything that's, that comes into the music and it comes to, uh, comes out of the, out of, uh, out of, uh, my fingers, uh, into, into a guitar and a melody or a riff or something. But yeah, we don't really see ourselves that much as like technical, uh, guitarists in, in that case <laughs> uh it, when you look when you look at the development of the band is there a member of the band that even though you don't see yourself in terms of your own development is there someone in the band that you see their growth from where they were to where they are now that that allows you to pinpoint to them as well oh, yeah. you're not the same person yeah absolutely i mean that's definitely uh, our singer and i'd say it's our drummer i mean our drummer hasn't changed his uh, style as a very dynamic, uh, sometimes a little chaotic uh, style, very, very fast. A lot of things are happening. Um, it's very original, I think. It's a little uh, hard to um, uh, yeah, to copy or to, to grasp, I think, for, for other drums, what exactly he's doing. Um, I like that a lot about, uh, about his drumming. Um, I think he was a good drummer uh, even when we when we started. Um, but I always thought like he's always the guy that from record to record has like the, the strongest development. Same as our singer, you know. If you listen to uh, the demo, you know that uh, 20, uh, 20 years back or twenty one years back, um, that's a completely different voice. It's not even not even recognizable, you know. And then the first record, and from record to record, it's always a different voice. You know, sometimes the screams get higher and pitchier, you know, and the growls got deeper a little bit. Then he, yeah, left that pretty much and uh, exchanged that with a different kind of uh, growling or something uh, on 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 the side. And yeah, and on the new record, it's again a different different kinds of different kind of vocals. So I I'd rather say I go with the drummer and the and the singer. <laughs> I love the fact that you're putting the spotlight on everybody else, but not on you. It's, well, like, it's everybody else. If, if, yeah, exactly. if everything else is on everybody else, I'm just here to play guitar and have a good time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's it's a very good policy to go with that kind of mindset. That way there's less of a spotlight on you. You can actually have a little bit more fun. In, in speaking perhaps of the emphasis of fun, who has the hardest job when it comes to putting a record together? Who... Who is the one that uh, that becomes the general and puts everyone in line in order for for the album to end up being what you guys want it to be? Well, I mean, that's definitely uh, our other guitarist uh, Tobias because he produced this record. You know, that means like he uh, he was there all the time in the, in the studio. Uh, he started with uh, with doing the drums together with Sebastian. Then uh, then he recorded the, most of the guitars. You know, uh, together with me. Uh, uh, rhythm guitars, uh, lead guitars we did together. Uh, after that, I was finished in the studio, but then he went on uh, with, the, with the singer and also the bass, everything, uh, all vocals. Um, uh, when Benny recorded the vocals, he was there all the time. So, uh, yeah, he's really spent a lot of time uh, in the studio, you know. 
um, yeah, at the same time, he was uh, involved in the songwriting process, you know, yeah. But uh, on the other hand, for example, as uh, yeah, I wrote the lyrics for the for the record um, uh, this time, like all by myself. Uh, in the past, uh, sometimes our bass player also wrote some lyrics. Uh, yeah, and I'm making like suggestions of uh, how you know how to sing it or where to sing it, and uh, put the lyrics on the different kinds of songs. You know. So it's also, uh, there was also a lot of work and um, yeah, actually I'm quite proud of it, of, uh, you know, uh, having this behind me because you can spend like hours and hours on these kinds of things because their options are all there, you know, and uh, it's a very creative uh, process, but also a very fulfilling process. So yeah, I'd say like probably, uh, yeah, Tobias and, uh, and me probably did the most of the work. Uh, the, the band has had a, an incredible uh, longevity as far as the career is concerned. At, at this point in time, releasing this album, All Is Dust, uh, is there still uh, doors that you hope that this album opens for you guys that, that for one reason or another, they haven't been opened yet? Um, I No, I, I wouldn't really say so because I think we're... we're not that kind of um, ambitious band, you know, that, you know, wants to make a living out of it or wants to get rich with the music or something uh, where we're all like our living situations or our situation that right now is pretty much that like three of us have like kids, you know, rather uh, young kids, you know, so uh, we're not a band that's like eager on you know, to, you know, to go on a big tour or anything like this it probably wouldn't be possible anyways. Uh, so that's not really our goal. Uh, our goal is simply, uh, I'd say like, um, yeah, making music still, Uh, being able to uh, to be creative, make music, and put it out there. So I think it's um, and yeah, and also like spreading our um, yeah our uh, message, you know, in the in the lyrics and stuff. So um, I think it's I think we are very um, an idealist band somehow, you know, because uh, it's not about commercial. Uh, you know, we didn't write this record, you know, um, to become more famous or become more like commercially successful or even more successful at all, you know, because, uh, you know, when it comes down to it, uh, we could have written a record that, you know, would have been better commercially, you know. I mean, uh, we, we know we know enough about music uh, to maybe write songs that could have been uh, commercially more successful or something, you know. Uh, we I think we know how to do it, you know, but, um, but we don't, you know, because simply, um, Uh, it's uh, it would it would be very fake, you know. Uh, it's uh, our I, we, the way that we try to do it is uh, is uh, as honest as possible, you know. Uh, because in the end, uh, we don't want to fool anyone else, and uh, we don't want to fool ourselves. And that's the greatest privilege about you know making music. You can do what you want, and uh, yeah, you can free yourself from any kind of uh, expectations. Uh, and then uh, this is like the greatest fulfillment uh, fulfillment that you can achieve as an as a musician as an artist you know to simply do what what you like and what you want and not uh, care a lot about uh, anything else you know <laughs> See a little bit uh, you know thinking about you more than thinking about the I mean if you don't if you don't satisfy yourself as a musician then the music is very hard to satisfy others to be honest It probably it's probably right you know so i think the only way particularly in a scene like this you know i think the only way is an is an honest uh, genuine way you know uh, of doing it and um, yeah anything else uh, yeah anything else uh, could work maybe you know maybe it works with other bands i don't know if you have a producer that writes songs for bands or something but uh, for us uh, it would be completely uh, pointless you know So is that is that going to be your vision for the future? A band that lives in the moment, that each record becomes a snapshot of where you currently are, without really overthinking or having this master plan for world domination. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we never. I think we never had a, like uh, we never had a big plan or something. I mean, for example, I don't know uh, if you know this record, Omnicide. It was a record. <clears throat> it was a record we wrote uh, very spontaneously, you know, and. Um, And we didn't really think about how it would like sound in the end or something. And then um, this, uh, the producer um, Zeus, you know, uh, made this very dry and very heavy and brutal sound, you know, and uh, mixed it in a very, uh, very hard way. 
and then it came out as an absolutely brutal record and uh, I, I would say like when we wrote it it simply felt right you know but it was not our intention to write the most uh, brutal Niera uh, record ever you know and uh, so today it's a record uh, yeah that some people you know really admire and really you know worship somehow you know and others say like I like all records except this one you know uh, but uh, it's, it was a completely spontaneous uh, thing, you know, and um, and uh, I, when I listened to it in the end, I said, oh, my God, you know, what, what did we do? You know, it's, it's such, a, such a relentless record, you know, and uh, it wasn't even our, our intention to write like the most brutal or relentless in the era record or something. But it, in the end, it just came out like this, you know, but um, but this is how we composed it and how we wrote it and uh, how we felt we felt comfortable with with it so um yeah so there's nothing nothing wrong about it so that's what we got so uh it it is like they say it, it is what, what it is now i know you mentioned that you guys uh three of you guys have kids little kids and obviously uh being on the road for long periods of time is not on the cards but you have a new album coming out i'm sure you you want to play some of these songs live and you want to play in front of, of fans so do you have any plans for for uh for what the future holds and well the near future holds for you guys as far as playing some live shows well we have this uh like in two weeks uh or um, so pretty much the after um the date on uh, uh, of our release uh of the new record it's also um, a mainstream festival in Minster. it's a festival that's headlined by the hives and uh, parkway drive uh on the on the on a friday and then on saturday it goes on uh, that's in two weeks, uh, and then um, we're playing an Elk Riot uh, festival in uh, in Hamburg, uh, where Amon Amath is uh, headlining, and then we're playing Summer Breeze and Reload Festival with uh, Heaven to Burn, Amon Amath, Corn, uh, yeah, so very big festivals, um, yeah, and then we also have a release show coming up in uh, in the middle of September uh, with our friends of uh, Breakdown of Sanity, uh, that's in our hometown in Münster. That's the yeah. That's the plan for the next uh, weeks and uh, and and month. And then yeah. And I think uh, other plans are are being made, but not uh, not official. So uh, we we see what happens then. Yeah. I think you got enough on your plate. Say for now, at least. I think you have enough to to deal with in the short term. That's a lot of yep. shows, a lot of festivals. I mean, this is the festival season. Uh, so you, you guys look like you guys going to be busy, and it's good because. You definitely want to get out of there, out there, and, and play tracks out of, a, out of a new record. I'm sure that's always in the back of your mind when you when you're releasing a new album. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but at the same time, for this record, it was also a little different. You know, because uh, we thought, okay, this is our eighth record. You know, do we need wh what? Uh, what is our aim for this record? You know, uh, is it is our aim like to create new songs that uh, you know are will hit perfectly live? You know. Uh, some new songs for uh, for the for the live stage or something, and we thought actually it's it's rather it's rather the opposite because uh, with uh, seven records, uh, not not all uh, songs on these he on these records are hits or something, but uh, uh, to be to to be um, self confident, uh, we have enough hits, so to say. Like we have songs that we cannot skip off uh, off uh, our set list, you know, because some people would say like. How could they not play this song, you know? And um, so it was clear, like for a set of 30 or 40 minutes or something, um, yeah, uh, we have enough songs already. You know, it's only like the longer sets, maybe 60, 70 or 80 minutes uh, where we could like squeeze in very perfectly like new material. But if it's a show of 30 or 40 minutes, a festival show or something, well, we already have like enough, uh, enough material and uh, <clears throat> Would be very difficult uh, to squeeze a lot of new material in you know because then you would have to skip out of out uh, a lot of uh, songs that the, the fans love or want to hear you know so it's rather complicated to have like so many records you know if you only have one or two records uh, maybe it's a little easier you know if you have very good records you know with a lot of hits on it you know but so for us it was clear like uh let's not compose the songs in a way that they would perfect work perfectly live you know let's have a different focus let's just like uh, write songs that are like interesting to hear or, or or you know exciting to hear or to follow that makes it a little, a little more interesting you know for the for the listener um rather than like let's compose a record of 
of hits, you know, with like, um, you know, choruses that you can sing along and all these kinds of things. So, so the life, uh, the whole life aspect, yeah, was not that dominant. It's, it's rather, it, it was rather a little bit uh, the opposite, you know. And I think that uh, allows you to be in the moment and create the record that works for you in that time without really worrying too much about what's ahead. Uh, it's 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 important. Sometimes sometimes you spend too much time thinking of the past or worrying about the future, and we don't really get to enjoy the moment that we're currently in. And it looks like this is one of those records that was all about enjoying the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's uh, the way that you summarize that is uh, is an, is a is a perfect uh, summary. You know, we don't care so much about what we already did in the past, and uh, we don't care too much about how it will be perceived. You know, of course, you don't want to disappoint your fans. You know, you love them. Uh, uh, they did so much for us. They're like uh, so um, uh, so faithful and everything, and so passionate and. Uh, you know, we wouldn't want to disappoint them, you know, but at the same time, uh, you need to free yourself a little bit from uh, from expectations in order to, uh, yeah, to create something freely, you know, because if you don't, uh, it's not a, it will probably not be a very good uh, natural uh, product, you know, and then, uh, and then no one is pleased in the end, you know, so uh, you have, can you, you can bear it in mind uh, somehow in the back of your head, but at the same time, uh, you have to free yourself also from from expectations to you know really get into into the bottom of yourself you know and uh, create something uh, worthwhile really you know. I agree with you a hundred percent, Stefan. Thank you very much for your time today, man. I really appreciate talking to you about the record. Uh, all the best uh, in this summer, in this busy uh, festival summer uh, that's uh, coming ahead for you guys. All the best with the release on June twenty eighth on Metal Blade Records. Thank you once again for taking the time, but not only taking the time, wearing a Rush shirt at the same time. So <laughs> thank you for both things. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Thank you for the great interview. I really enjoyed thank it. Take care, man. All the best. Take care. All the best. Bye-bye.